Welcome guys to another video. As you know, unless you have been living under a rock, the Dragonfly pre-patch is here. And with it, you might be a little confused because there's a new talent system. Oh. Oh. But don't worry, your friendly neighborhood butter fell face demon hunter has got your back. Because I'm nice that way. So today we're gonna be talking about some possible builds for the Havoc demon hunter in the pre-patch so you can dominate the PvP ladder in an overtuned fashion. So let's start with the class talents, which are more like the base talents you can have for both specs. By the way, all the builds will be exported and put in the description down below so you guys can import it yourselves and play with the build right away. So for the class, we start with Vengeful Retreat, obviously because it's like one of our iconic abilities removes all snares we push back a little bit and reduce our enemies movement speed by 70 percent and dealing some damage blazing path because we need an additional charge of fell rush gives us more mobility and we really cannot play with just one unrestrained fury because of course we want our fury to be capped by 120 always helps to have more fury to spam that cast strike as much as we can yes we are a one button class Imprison, which goes well with detainment from PvP. You can basically cycle on targets or you can basically CC them with Imprison, but if you don't pick detainment, your enemies will break out of CC if they receive damage. Vengeful Bonds, because Vengeful Retreat now reduces the movement speed of all nearby enemies by 70%. Improve Disrupt, because we want our Interrupt to have a bigger range. Obviously, I'm looking at you mages, because you guys can blink away by 150 yards per second, so it obviously helps us. Bouncing Glaives, throw Glaive Ricochets to one additional target. Very useful if you want to break people out of stealth or or basically damage as much enemies as we can or this ties into the father to the flame which helps us not only damage our enemies but also hit our demon for the burst damage healing and that demon soul which increases our damage consume magic this is indispensable i mean this is basically our dispel we need to dispel hots from druids any beneficial buffs from the enemies which gives us an advantage especially against healers priests and druids especially obviously here we don't get aura of pain because we do not need emolition or critical chance we just need more mobility which is Fellblade. Again, we cannot replace Fellblade with anything because we need Fellblade because we're obviously playing with Demon Blades and it generates more fury and helps with gap closing. Then we go with Disrupting Fury. Disrupt generates 30 fury on a successful interrupt. So basically each time we interrupt the target, we will get 30 fury back. Everything that builds fury is amazing. Pursuit because Master increases our movement speed. Again, we are the most mobile class ever and we want to be even more mobile. So yeah, mobility, priority number one. Master of the Glaive. Oh boy, we can now have Master of the Glaive and fairly Eruption. So we don't have to choose anymore between between stunning and slowing targets we can basically have both because master of the glaive is now a base talent we have two charges of throw glaive remember that our throw glaive bounces to one additional target because of bouncing glaives and they also slow that target by 50 percent rush of chaos reduces the cooldown of metamorphosis by 60 seconds metamorphosis now has the cooldown reduced but not its duration which is I think amazing right now. We pick Chaos Nova because it's like one of our main stunts. We have Chaos Nova, Fell Eruption, and Imprison, which is our core CCs. So we obviously have to spec into it. So Redding because it helps with Leech and we rely a lot on self heals. Then we go Demonic because obviously we want Ibeam to turn us into a demon and we need the Metamorphosis uptime as much as we can. It's one of our biggest strengths. And first of Dilly Dye can be picked up as a PvP talent. Then we have Illidari Knowledge, reduces magic damage taken by 6%. Yes, casters can no longer just kill us with two buttons, except Warlocks. So here I go with Unleashed Power because it reduces the Fury cost of Chaos Nova by 50% and its cooldown by 20%, which gives me more CC uptime. But another possibility of this spec could be to not pick Unleashed Power and pick Char Blades. You heal for 5% of all fire damage you deal. So whether you need more CCs or self-heal, these are your choices. Charred War Blades for more self-heal and Unleashed Power for more CC uptime. Next we go with Internal Struggle because it gives us more mastery and in turn it gives us more chaos damage and our movement speed is increased. Darkness because it is such a core ability to Demon Hunters. It's a great defensive ability. Basically when you put Darkness on the floor, you help your friendly targets and you to avoid all damage from an attack and this has a 20% chance. Next we go with Erratic Felhar. The cooldown of Felrush is reduced by 20%, gives us more uptime, more gap closing, overall increases our mobility. On the same road, one of my favorite talents is here and this is why demo hunters are overtuned for now because we have fleshcraft from the necrolord covenant but we also have the hunt ability <laughs> from night fate no longer switching covenants we just have both <laughs> Basically, this is our biggest damage and it's castable and we really want to spec into it. Huge burst. And we actually get healed by 25% of the damage we deal with it. And for the last talent, another great perk that we usually had with the Collective Anguish Legendary is the Collective Anguish effect itself, which we can get now from a talent. Imagine now that we're playing with Burning Moon Legendary and we have Collective Anguish. Pretty cool, right? Now, for the Havoc points. 
Obviously, first is gonna be I Beam. <laughs> Best ability that we can have on Havoc, in my opinion. It helps with collective anguish, it helps with demonic, it's a great ranged channelable ability. And of course, you get those Illy Daddy vibes, you know what I mean? Improved Cast Try because it's our main damage dealer and we basically spam it every time we have Fury. So, makes sense to increase his damage by 10%. Demon Blaze because, of course, we need Demon Blaze, okay? You deal additional shadow damage with your auto attacks and you generate Fury. We all know Fellblade Demon Blaze works. It has worked for so long and it still does. Fellow Fire Heart increases the duration of Immolation Hour and Sigil of Flame by 2 seconds. So we basically need our uptime with Immolation Hour because our rotation hasn't changed. So we pop Immolation Hour at the start of the fight, we gap close with Fell Blade and Demon Blaze would do its job. Oh and also don't forget to throw Glaive because you have Master of the Glaive and you can slow your targets. Next we have Demonic Appetite. Before we would have to choose between Demonic Appetite and Demon Blades, but now we don't have to. So we're gonna pick it. Chaos Strike has a chance to spawn a lesser soul fragment, consuming any soul fragment grants 30 fury and obviously self heal. We improved Fell Rush, Fell Rush damage increased by 20% and it ties up with Blazing Path which gives us two charges. As you can see some of these talents are like self-explanatory and if you have been playing Demon Hunter for a while or you have watched my guides some of these are intuitive. Speaking of intuitive we're gonna get first blood obviously because Blade Dance deals more damage to the first target struck. We want to maximize that Blade Dance damage as much as we can. Then we go with Burning Hatred. Emolition Hour generates an additional 60 fury over 12 seconds. I'm playing this as I call it the fury build right? So with this spec I want to build as much fury as I can like to just spend it on chaos strikes over and over again. Tied up into this is Dancing with Fate. This was the best conduit we ever had and now it becomes a talent and I'm glad that this carries on to Dragonfly. The final slash of Blade Dance deals an additional 40% which works very well with First Blood. Critical Chaos. The chance of Chaos Strike will refund 20 Furies increased by 50% of your Critical Strike chance. But I'm also playing with Chaos Theory. Legendary. So OP. Next it depends on the situation. I play with Desperate Instincts because I want my blur to be triggered if I'm being like bursted down by double DPS or if you think you're not gonna resist during your fight let's say against a hunter or some big burst like Raider Paladin for Demonology Warlocks or, or all of you nuclear bursters you pick Netherwalk because you negate the 100% of the damage you're unable to attack but you're basically immune. Watch out this does not work when you are CC'd. Chaotic Transformation this is very good for our damage because when you activate Metamorphosis the cooldowns of Blade Dance and Ibeam are immediately reset. Just imagine Bam, you're going to meta, boom Chaos Theory, boom Blade Dance with Dancing with Fate and First Blood and then spam your Chaos Strikes. Obviously we pick Feller Option because we need RCC and now that we have Feller Option and Master of the Glaive as I said, it's just perfect for us because we lacked a lot of CC in the previous expansion so I'm very happy with this change. Next, I know I said in the last guide we don't use the Blind Fury build in PvP, do not be weird, but Blind Fury feels really nice in this pre-patch on the Fury build build. Ibeam generates 40 Fury every second and its duration is increased by 50%. We basically have Demonic, Blind Fury and Demon Blades and Feller blade and demonic appetite why not use them all because before we had to like choose now we have them all do not change this blizzard i beam now does so much for us looks can kill i beam deals guaranteed critical strikes also ties in with all of these so why not pick it more burst more free building serrated glaive yes by now you see that i really like using my beam because this also helps the i beam enemies hit by throw glaive take 20 percent increased damage from the i beam furious gaze when i beam finishes fully channeling your haste is increased by an additional 10 percent for 10 seconds now the downside of all these perks is if someone interrupts your eye beam that's why most people do not play with blind fury and all of its perks because you can interrupt it and then it's all done you will not benefit fully from this so make sure you really plan your eye beams one good way of doing this is basically fell eruption and then use eye beam so you make sure your target doesn't interrupt it but in a 3v3 scenario and the new solo queue rated this still could be interrupted so be careful relentless onslaught chaos strike has a 10 percent chance to trigger a second chaos strike i like this because it gives us more damage and obviously when you spam so many chaos strikes because you have so much fury because you're building fury with this spec you know additional chaos strikes cannot hurt. Inner Demon. This is a talent that uh, I'm like really nostalgic about. This was an artifact power back in Legion. Entering Demon form causes your next chaos to unleash your Inner Demon, causing it to crash into your target and deal 3k chaos damage to only by your enemies. Basically, you go into meta because you casted I Beam or because you actually triggered it. You deal one chaos strike and there's another demon just jumping on the target. Super fun, damage dealing and a bit of a Demon Hunter roleplay, you know? Then I go with Accelerating Blade. Throw Glaive deals 25% increased damage for each enemy hit, which works really well with Bouncing glaives because it ricochets to one additional target and we also help it with soul rent throw glaive causes targets to take an additional 60 percent of damage dealt as chaos over six seconds this was also an artifact ability back in the day and now we have it as a talent i would say havoc can be made 
great again. Now we have another spec that was also suggested to me by one of our viewers, Ofasama, who is a very good Demon Hunter player, and that is our burst build. So on the burst build, we're changing some things on Havoc. We're basically going with initiative, damaging an enemy before the damage you increases your critical strike. And if you use Vengeful Retreat, you get to reset this initiative talent. Here you can go another walk or Desperate Instincts, depending on the, on the situation, as I said. Unbound Chaos, because obviously you're gonna have that Fell Rush increased damage by 400%. It was 500% in Shadowlands. Hmm, a nerf. So basically, Munish Nowra, Fell Rush, boom, damage. Tactical Retreat, Vengeful Retreat has a 5 second cooldown reduction and generates 80 Fury. And this is also good for Fury Generation, because <laughs> we can spam those Chaos Strikes and Blade Dances. Then we actually can, with Demonic now, we still do not have to choose. We can also pick Momentum. Fell Rush, The Hunt, Vengeful Retreat increases your damage done by 8% for 5 seconds. So this all goes into how much damage you can output and how many perks you can gather so your damage is increased so that your burst can be epic. Then we go with Know Your Enemy, gain critical strike damage equal to 100% of your critical strike chance. Very important. And for the first time we can actually play it and still don't have to choose Essence Break. You slash all enemies in front of you for 10k chaos damage and increase the damage of your chaos strike and blade dance that you deal to them by 80% for 4 seconds. If we have a strong healer with us and we play this build, oh boy. On the right side we also go with Trail of Ruin, so we basically have a dot as well from Blade Dance. See, this is all focused on a lot of damage overall. And you go with Growing Inferno, Emulation Arrow has damage increased by 5% each time it deals damage. Restless Hunter, Living Demon Form grants a charge of Fell Rush and increases the damage of your next Blade Dance by 50%. So you have your Blade Dance with Trail of Ruin, First Blood, and Dancing with Fate that benefit from this. And you have that charge of Fell Rush, which you can use with Emulation Arrow to increase its damage by 400%. Four PvP talents. I go with Reverse Magic most of the time because... Man, those roots are really affecting my performance in arenas. You remove all harmful magical effects from yourself and all nearby allies within 10 yards and send them back to the original caster. It's funny when you root back a Restored Druid. Mostly I go with First of Daily Dire because Metamorphosis grants 10% versatility and its cooldown is reduced by 60 seconds. So another cooldown reduction from our Metamorphosis. It goes to 2 minutes now in PvP. And then I pick Mortal Dance, so Blade Dance, and I use Mortal Dance because Blade Dance now reduces my target's healing received by 50%. And of course, especially now that solo queue is 3v3 oriented, we need to reduce that heal as much as we can. Sometimes I swap Reverse Magic for Detainment, if I need that additional Cyclone, you know? Or I pick Rain from Above if I have a double melee, which is basically bursting me down and and I'm in danger. Usually I swap between those. Don't forget that now your talents can be changed anywhere and can be imported or exported with your friends if you have those. Alright, so I hope that this video has been helpful. These are like some preliminary Havoc builds in pre-patch until we go into Dragonflight and we'll see how PvP works there. But these are some pre-patch fun builds you can play with and test out the new solo rated arenas. I hope this has been helpful. If it has been, give this video a like. It helps the channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification so you can receive any new update about the Havoc Demon Hunter and more. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!